Actinomycosis is a rare type of bacterial infection. Most bacterial infections are confined to one part of the body because the bacteria are unable to penetrate through the body's tissue. However, actinomycosis is unusual in that the infection is able to move slowly but steadily through the body's tissue. Actinomycosis can develop almost anywhere inside the tissue of the human body. But the condition tends to affect certain areas of the body and can be classified into four main types. Oral cervicofacial actinomycosis Thoracic actinomycosis Abdominal actinomycosis Pelvic actinomycosis Next I will explain each type in detail. Oral cervicofacial actinomycosis is where the infection develops inside the tissue of the neck, jaw or mouth. Most cases are caused by dental problems, such as tooth decay. Oral cervicofacial actinomycosis is the most common type of actinomycosis and accounts for an estimated half of all cases. Thoracic actinomycosis is where the infection develops inside the lungs or associated airways. It is thought that most cases of thoracic actinomycosis are caused by people accidentally inhaling droplets of contaminated fluid into their lungs. Thoracic actinomycosis accounts for an estimated 15 to 20 percent of cases. Abdominal actinomycosis is where the infection develops inside the abdomen, tummy. This type of actinomycosis can have a range of potential causes. It can develop as a secondary complication of a more common infection, such as appendicitis, or after accidentally swallowing a foreign object, such as a chicken bone containing the actinomyces bacteria. Abdominal actinomycosis accounts for an estimated 20% of all cases. Pelvic actinomycosis is where the infection develops inside the pelvis, the bony structure that includes the hip bones. Pelvic actinomycosis usually only occurs in women because most cases are caused when the actinomyces bacteria are spread from the female genitals into the pelvis. It is thought that most cases of pelvic actinomycosis are associated with the long-term use of the intrauterine device, IUD, type of contraceptive, which is often referred to as the coil. The coil is a T-shaped device that fits inside the womb. Pelvic actinomycosis accounts for an estimated 10% of all cases, each type has different symptoms according to the location. Next I will explain the symptoms of each type separately. The symptoms of oral cervicofacial actinomycosis include 1. Swollen lumps on your cheek or neck, which can gradually increase in size and number. 2. Reddish or bluish colored skin over the lumps. 3. High temperature, fever, of 38 degrees Celsius, 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, or above may occasionally develop. During the initial stages of oral cervicofacial actinomycosis, the lumps may be tender before later becoming painless and hard to the touch. Your jaw muscles may also be affected, which can make chewing difficult. Oral cervicofacial actinomycosis can also cause narrow passages to open up in the surface of your skin in the affected areas. The passages are called sinus tracts. These should not be confused with sinuses, the cavities found in your face and nose. The sinus tracts leak pus, which may contain a yellow, granular lumpy. The symptoms of thoracic actinomycosis include high temperature, fever, of 38 degrees Celsius, 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, or above. Weight loss. Tiredness or fatigue. Loss of appetite. Shortness of breath. Chest pain. The appearance of sinus tracts on the surface of your chest. You may also develop a dry cough or a cough that produces phlegm. You may bring up drops of blood when you cough, or if you produce phlegm it may be blood stained. The symptoms of abdominal actinomycosis include Mild fever, usually a temperature that is no higher than 38 degrees Celsius, 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit Weight loss Tiredness, fatigue A change in your bowel habits, such as constipation or diarrhea Abdominal, tummy, pain Nausea, 
feeling sick, vomiting, a noticeable mass or lump in your lower abdomen, the appearance of sinus tracts on the surface of your abdomen. The symptoms of pelvic actinomycosis include lower abdominal pain, irregular or abnormal vaginal bleeding or discharge, loss of appetite, tiredness, fatigue, mild fever, a noticeable mass or lump in your pelvis, the bony structure that includes the hip bones. Actinomycosis is an opportunistic infection that does not cause any symptoms unless an opportunity arises for it to penetrate into the body's tissue. Opportunities for oral cervicofacial actinomycosis include Tooth decay particularly if the decay is left untreated for many years. Gum disease. Dental abscess. Tonsillitis. Inner ear infection. Dental surgery, such as a tooth extraction or root canal treatment. Jaw surgery. Most cases of thoracic actinomycosis are thought to be caused by small particles of food or other ingested material that get mixed up with the actinomycosis bacteria. Rather than passing harmlessly down into the stomach, the particles are mistakenly passed down into the windpipe and the airways of the lungs. People with long-term drug or alcohol problems are particularly at risk of developing thoracic actinomycosis for two reasons. Being drunk or intoxicated increases your risk of accidentally ingesting material into your lungs. Long-term drug and alcohol misuse weakens the immune system, which makes a person more vulnerable to developing an infection. See the how actinomycosis occurs when something tears the wall of the intestine, bowel, allowing the bacteria to penetrate into deep tissue. The intestine can tear as a result of an infection, such as a burst appendix that damages the wall of the intestine. Or it can be damaged through injury, for example, when someone mistakenly swallows a fish bone. There have also been some reported cases of abdominal actinomycosis occurring as a complication of bowel or abdominal surgery. Most cases of pelvic actinomycosis have been recorded in women who were using the intrauterine device, IUD, form of contraception. The it is a small, T-shaped contraceptive device made from plastic and copper that fits inside the womb. The women affected tend to be long-term users of the it. 8 years or more. One explanation for the high number of cases of pelvic actinomycosis in women who are using the id is that, over time, the id may damage the womb lining, allowing bacteria to penetrate into deep tissue. However, no research has yet been done to find out whether or not this is the case. It should be stressed that developing pelvic actinomycosis as a result of using an id is very unlikely. Millions of women use the id device and there have only been a handful of reported cases of pelvic actinomycosis, and its initial stages, actinomycosis can be a challenging condition to diagnose correctly. This is because it shares the symptoms of many more common conditions, including cancer, appendicitis, pneumonia, pelvic inflammatory disease. Because actinomycosis can be difficult to diagnose. Many cases are only discovered when doctors are carrying out tests or surgery to check for the presence of other conditions. For example, many cases of actinomycosis are detected when biopsies are carried out to check for cancer. A biopsy is where a small tissue sample is removed so that it can be examined under a microscope. Actinomycosis can usually be more confidently diagnosed in its later stages after the sinus tracts have appeared in the surface of the skin. This is because the sulfur granules that are produced by the sinus tracts during an actinomycosis infection have a distinctive shape that can be identified under a microscope. Antibiotics are the main treatment for actinomycosis. A long-term course of antibiotics is required to wipe out the infection completely. An initial course of antibiotic injections is usually recommended for 2-6 weeks, followed by a course of antibiotic tablets for another 6-12 months. A nurse should be able to teach you how to administer the antibiotic injections in your own home so you do not need to stay in the hospital for the duration of the course. The preferred antibiotics for treating actinomycosis are benzopenicillin, 
which is used for the antibiotic injections, and phenoxymethyl penicillin tablets. Side effects of these penicillins include diarrhea, nausea, skin rash, increased vulnerability to fungal infections, such as thrush, a fungal infection that occurs in the mouth. If you are allergic to penicillin, alternative antibiotics, such as tetracycline or erythromycin can be used. Occasionally, surgery may be required to repair any tissue damage or to drain the pus from any abscesses that have formed deep inside your body. Abscesses that occur as a result of actinomycosis may develop in many parts of your body, including your lungs. Abscesses can spread easily from one part of your body to another. If the original site of the infection is located in the skin of your face, it may spread to nearby parts of your body, such as your scalp or ears. If the original site of the infection is your mouth, it may spread to your tongue, larynx, voice box, trachea, windpipe, salivary glands and the tubes that connect your throat to your nose. If the infection spreads to your brain, a brain abscess could develop. Most cases of oral actinomycosis occur as a result of poor dental hygiene. Practicing good dental hygiene is the best way to prevent actinomycosis. You may find the it useful if you brush your teeth twice a day using fluoride toothpaste. Floss your teeth once a day. Use a mouthwash that contains fluoride once a day. Limit the amount of sweet and sticky food that you eat because this increases your risk of developing tooth decay. Make sure that you attend all of your scheduled dental checkups. If you have healthy teeth, you should have a dental checkup at least once every two years. However, if you have a history of dental disease, you may require more frequent checkups.